you know, as a firm believer in Christ, I had a hard time forgiving. And that is something that the Lord really had to deal with me on. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. And so this is something that um, I'm, you know, going through right now. And I would just like to share some insight on how the Holy Spirit has led me and on um, the things that I've learned. And so um, I think a lot of us, we struggle with forgiveness. The Bible says a lot of things about forgiveness, actually. It says that if you have an ought with your brother, that you should go to him um, and you should confront him. And um, not even that, after Peter had denied Jesus and he felt so much conviction and so much um, condemnation from that, after Jesus had raised from the dead and went to Peter, Jesus didn't bring up anything that Peter had done. He didn't say, oh, didn't I tell you we we're going to do this? He didn't do any of that. He just said, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He didn't say anything about what Peter did. And that is the perfect example of forgiveness. A lot of us, when someone has done us wrong, um, we feel offended. And that is normal. It's normal to feel offended, but it's not normal to have the spirit of offense. And when it comes to the spirit of offense, we feel entitled to hold on to that offense like it's ours, like, um, you know, we should hold something over that person's head. And that's not the way that it should be. The Bible says those who are forgiven much um, love much. And, you know, they forgive even more because they understand that if all this has been forgiven on my behalf, why shouldn't I bestow this same type of grace and forgiveness to the next person, you know? And so as for me, um, even being with raised in the church and things like that, I didn't really understand the true essence of forgiveness until I met my husband. My husband, um, before we, you know, got engaged, like we talked about all of the things, the pains, the hurts, the traumas that I had been through, of course him as well, but that ha that I had been through um, with my, you know, past um, experiences with dating um, other men and it didn't take me long to forgive because I began to understand um, why I should forgive you know there were certain things where it was like okay you know even though this person you know did offend you and did maybe cross the line um, you know what did you do in that relationship um, what could you have done better and when I began to look at it from the lens of you know of course I'm not perfect even though this person did do something wrong I probably did something as well. And then I was like, okay, you know, if I can accept this love from Christ, if I can accept that Christ has forgiven my sins, you know, I should forgive the other person as well. And so um, that is what made me really understand forgiveness. But even then, I want to tell you guys about this um, really hard time I had with forgiving someone. And it wasn't that I didn't want to bestow forgiveness. It was so much that I had so much pain um, and hurt built up from it. So um, before I had gotten married, I had asked someone who was really close to me, um, a friend, to, you know, just check out my husband. You know how we do, like, when it comes to girls. We're like, hey, girl, you know, I want you to meet this guy and tell me what you think afterwards. And so basically it was a situation like that. And so I asked her, you know, and she said, let me get back to you, you know, when I have time. And I said, okay, that's fine. And eventually the person never got back to me. Uh, I ended up getting married and time has passed. And so um, a while back, this person had texted in the group chat that I have with along with some other friends. And I began to feel, you know, feelings of like betrayal, you know, rise up inside of me. And I was like, okay, Lord, like this is not how I want to feel because I know that I'm acting a certain type of way towards this person. And I don't want that. Like I didn't want to feel this type of way towards this person because obviously there was a lot of love there still. But it was just a broken, um, broken trust type of situation. And so, you know, the Lord was like, you need to forgive her, period, point blank. Um, and I knew that I had no choice to forgive her. He said, if you call, if you call yourself my daughter, if you are a part of my family, if you are my daughter, then there's no choice to forgive. There's no other option. And so I, you know. Um, I probably was going back and forth with this for about maybe a day. <laughs> like I didn't really go over a day because I understand, you know, the power of forgiveness. And so um, I just really heard the Holy Spirit so strongly say, just love her, just love her. 
And that really released me and helped me to forgive her because it helped me understand that people are going to be people, you know, nobody's perfect, but Christ. And so people are going to make errors. People are going to um, cause you to no longer have trust in them. That's why it says, do not put your trust in man, you know? And so when I began to realize that, and when I began to just love her unconditionally with the love of the Lord, that's when I was able to bestow forgiveness. And not even just that, just the recent issue that I happened to be going through, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to text someone who I haven't texted in a while. Um, I want to say in about a year. And um, at first, you know, I wrote the message and I was like, oh no, this is just me being in my feelings. But then um, I had a dream and um, basically that dream was letting me know that I need to forgive. And I was like, okay, Lord, like I'm going to go ahead and do this. And so um, I wrote the text message. I sent the text message and um, like the whole day I was like expecting like a response and I didn't get it and that's fine. And um, the next day I didn't get a response as well. And, you know, I was like, wow, Lord, like, you know, is this person going to respond? And then, you know, I was just having a conversation with the Holy Spirit and I was like, you know, um, well, he said, you didn't really send the message for a response. like." You sent it to go to your brother that you have an ought with and like confront them, you know? And so that's what I did. It wasn't anything else. It was me letting, it was me letting the other person know that, Hey, I love you despite everything that has happened and we are okay. Like, and if I don't get a response from that, (laughs) I told myself, if I don't get a response from that, then that is okay because I've done my part. I done what I've done with the Holy Spirit told me to do. I know in our society, um, when a person has done us wrong, we tend to block that person. We tend to unfollow that person. We delete their number, delete everything that has to do with that person. We um, cut them off per se. And that is, that is seen as something that is healthy or something that is, um, that takes place in your life when you're trying to, um, become a different person or, or, or grow, you know, spiritually or mentally, you know, or something like that. And that's not really true. Like the world teaches us to cut people off and, you know, that people should no longer be in your life, but that's not what Christ teaches us. Christ does not teach us that Christ never cut Peter off. Christ never cut us off. When Christ was forgiving the, um, the woman who had committed adultery, he didn't cut her off after all this. And he didn't do that. And I'm sure the Pharisees and the Sadducees, if they had a chance to repent, I know for sure that the Lord gave them another chance. The most perfect example was Paul, who was first saw in the Bible. He was persecuting all of the Christians because of what he believed. But the Lord radically changed him. The Lord radically restored. And now Paul is the most renowned apostle and the most well-known apostle in the Christian faith. But the Lord did not bring up anything that Paul Paul has done. The Lord didn't do any of that. The Lord changed Paul. He told him what he needed to do for the faith. And that was it. And Paul was eternally grateful. And so that is what we are called to do as believers. We're called to just love people. We're called to forgive people. We're called to pardon. We're called to have grace and mercy because that is what the Lord bestows upon us. That is what he gives us. I don't know how many times, you know, that we're supposed to read our Bible or that the Holy Spirit, um, tells us to pray or to wake up at a certain time and we don't do it. We make excuses for it. Day after day, we make excuses for it. Um, We don't read his word like we're supposed to. We don't study like we're supposed to. We don't um, constantly stay in a place of prayer like we're supposed to, but the Lord constantly forgives us. Every time we come back to him to repent, he never says, oh, remember you did that last time? And he never says, oh, um, I forgive, but I don't forget. He's never said that. He says that he throws our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. He forgets them. He does not remember them. He is there waiting to forgive us, waiting to give us mercy and grace um, every single day. So I'm not saying that forgiveness is easy because there are things that people would be like, why should I forgive this person? You know, um, whatever they did was so bad. You know, why should I forgive them? And I completely understand that. I understand that. But just remember how much the Lord has forgiven you from. And forgiveness is very important when it comes to love and um, being in a relationship and being um, being married. You know, you should always forgive your spouse. You should be quick to forgive your spouse. The Bible says that love is patient. 
love is kind love keeps no record of wrong that is one of the worst things is to um maybe have an argument with someone and they bring up something that you did months or years ago that's like wow like so when you said you forgave me, you never really forgave me. And it brings like a type of pain, you know, within you. And that causes even more discord than there was before. But we should not be keeping any record of wrongs. And that is what love is. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love is not boastful. It's kind and it's patient. And that's what we should be to everybody, regardless of what they've done to us. But we should be that person because that is who Christ is to us. And so I just wanted to come on here because it was heavy on my heart to really just speak about forgiveness and to um, just to share a truth about forgiveness. And being able to forgive someone is a part of your healing process. Not cutting people off, not deleting people, not blocking people. That's not a part of the healing process. That's part of the sweep it under the rug process and keep it pushing. But you know that you haven't forgiven if you see that person's face or if that person comes around and you're triggered or you feel some type of emotion, or you're like disgusted or something like that. That's how you know that you haven't forgiven. But true forgiveness is when you can be around that person and, and act and conduct yourself like nothing ever happened. Once again, I refer back to Jesus. When Jesus came to Peter and he said, Peter, feed my sheep. That's all. He never once, he never once reminded Peter of what he did. It is the enemy's job to keep us in condemnation, but just know that Jesus came to free us and forgiveness is a big part of freedom because you're no longer holding weights above people's heads. You're no longer holding um, yokes around people's necks. You're free. You're free to forgive. You're free to love. And truly, when you're operating in the spirit of Christ, all you want to do is forgive. All you want to do is love because you're overflowing with it so much within you. He says, I will bless you to the point where you will no longer have any room to receive. What does it say? Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So therefore, you're overflowing with your love. You're overflowing with forgiveness. So you have so much of it to just continue to give out. And the Lord will continue to fill your cup and you'll continue to give out. Forgiveness may not be an easy thing when we're in our flesh, but with Christ, all things are possible. And so therefore, if you have the spirit of Christ within you, it should be easy to forgive and it should be easy to love. Well, thanks guys for tuning in to another quick video um, about forgiveness. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And I will definitely have more great videos for you guys. Bye.